um, a, a decent job of having some accuracy. That's one super petzer. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's pushing down to uh, almost a sl sliver of health. Um, has vet one, so that's very good. Um, but it really needs to be a bit more careful with this Pershing. I like how it took out the Hetzer, so good job, but definitely needs to have some backing up squads. And here we go, Rifleman, just bring up some support. Flame Engineer, so very good. Do you see the Tellerman sitting right in front of the Pershing? Is this on the crossroad? And yes, it is. <laughs> uh, no, 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 it's out in the field in front of the house. Oh, jeez, I see that. That is very, very in front. So the Pershing really needs to be careful with those Teller mines or else, boom, they explode. Obviously the infantry can't nope, activate them. And here we go. Oh no, oh my gosh. Do you see how many infantry that killed? Uh, did it get five or four? That, that was quite a bit. We saw a whole bunch of, uh, bunch of uh, XP going uh, in the air. Pershing being taken out, how unfortunate. In a desperate attempt of <laughs> trying to do something, King tried to use field repair. As you guys can see, that the cross, the uh, little uh, wrench is still going. But unfortunately, that's 150 man or ammunition wasted. Totally not expecting that teller mine whatsoever. Huge losses for the American right now. What he needs to do is save up for another Pershing, but he's only at 350 manpower. That is a huge loss. It seemed like a turn of a tide of events for the Panzer Elite, but really just changing it back against the Americans. Wow. Yeah, and you, uh, you kind of have an odd veterancy decision on this uh, Bard squad over on the west side here. You've got two defensive and then one offensive. Uh, if he'd have gone offensive for the second vet and defensive for the third vet, he'd have received an extra 5% received accuracy bonus on that squad. So basically he just needs to um, change it up a bit, really. Yeah, it, well, and, and that was just on that individual squad, and that could have been because, uh, you know, with with a squad with some bars, what do you really do with it? I suppose so. But it seems like, um, it just seems like King is in such a desperate situation. I mean, he was just holding out until the last, uh, until the late game to try and get these late game tanks, the Pershing, and he lost it. I mean, this isn't, he's in such a bad position right now. Yeah, well, those those M8s are really killer in the whole process. You know, losing those early M8s that that keeps all of the infantry at bay uh, definitely makes it a lot harder. I find it quite funny, actually. You I see mean, some like, mines? King really does not have much in terms of doctrine ability, but yet he's still pretty much holding off against the Panzer Elite. Um, King obviously realizes that what a really good way of winning this would be through points, so he's got two victory points capped at the moment. Uh, King is down to 227 and his opponent is down to 373, so he's obviously trying to keep those points ticking against his opponent. But it seems like the Panzer Lee are quite undefensive right now. Well, you certainly have a, a, a slight defensive you know, push with the loss of the Hetzer. You know, you don't have anything really keeping the infantry back other than your own infantry. Um, and uh, so he needs to get those back, get them repaired. He had quite a few of them forward and wanted to retreat them so he didn't really lose any unnecessarily. And a scout card. Oh. So you're talking about unconventional. <laughs> I, I think what he's looking to do is have something a little beefier than a Kettenkrad to cap at this point. And, uh, you know, potentially, he's not hurting for resources at all. He's got uh, almost a thousand manpower. Actually, it looks like he's saving up for Panthers, um, especially knowing that his opponent has gone um, armor. And then he's got 300 munitions and 200 fuel, so he's definitely not sitting bad in a, in a resource situation. And King has actually been saving up quite a bit as well. Uh, King has 258 fuel, obviously does not need any more since he's going for late game tanks. He has 900 manpower, I believe, yep, he's going for another Pershing, so just on the field. And here we have two Panthers from All Noobs Are Here, so this Pershing going to have a bit of competition. Who will dominate this field? Who will be the Silverback? 
And I was just going to say as that Pershing was pulling over to the east side, I would actually take that over to the west side and push those those scout cars and the Panzer elites off just to make sure that, uh, you know, I didn't lose any more territory than I already had. That's right. And he does. That's Pershing. One shot into the side of that armored, that scout car, I mean, that's going to leave quite a dent. Of course, you have a mine laid right next to this M8 carcass, uh, trying to prevent the Panzer Lee player from using it as cover. I find that a bit funny. I think it should have been on the other side, actually, of that carcass. Uh, yes, conventional wisdom would say put it on the other yeah, side. Yeah, maybe he was just trying to have some cover or something. I, I don't really know, to be honest. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to be fighting anything uh, with Shreks or tanks, uh, you know, standing over top of that mine. Now, Ryan, two Panthers versus Pershing, who do you think would win? Um, for the most part, it's going to be the Panthers almost any time, as long as you don't have any support from uh, the American player. Uh, the, the Panthers, uh, you know... The Pershing does a decent job of penetrating their front armor, but really it needs some vet to consistently penetrate. Those Panthers uh, are actually doing a really good job of pen penetrating the front armor on the Pershing. Yes, and that's that's one of the things that, that kind of defines the, the match between the Pershings and the, and the Panthers as a whole. Um, he has to be careful about not trying to flank that Pershing, though, because he knows that there's rifle squads in the area. And if he gets sticky and the Pershing gets around behind him, he can do a ton of damage to those Panthers very quickly. He does quickly. not want to lose them. No, it's it's too much of an investment, really, to, to just kind of throw away. It seems like um, King is actually saving up his ammunition now. I'm guessing he's doing that. He's got 109. I'm guessing he's actually going to be saving up for field repairs. And hopefully not using it. You don't think it's going to be Allied Wind Machine? <laughs> Allied Wind Machine. I've never heard of that ability. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the one that replaces <laughs> tanks when they die. <laughs> well, Allied Hack Machine. <laughs> no, um, well, maybe. I suppose he could. He doesn't have that ability selected at the moment. Um, he's only got field repairs and the Pershing. Um, he's got two CP. 123 ammunition. He could definitely do that, but whether what he does, not too sure at the moment. I think that's always a tough call. Um, you know, whether you, you try and repair mid-fight, hey, you're going to want to do that a little earlier in the fight, or when you're in a real sticky kind of situation, or you go for um, the Allied War Machine and just go ahead and get a replacement out on the field. It also depends on the vet of the unit. Now, the unfortunate thing that I want to actually mention is that, like, I mean... You got obviously Panthers. Vermont can have Panthers. Uh, Panzer League can have Panthers. Only difference is that the uh, Panthers that the Panzer League get is that the they get veterancy from their kills. So imagine if they killed that Pershing and they used the Allied War Machine. So very good that they get a new Pershing. But then again, those Panthers would get some quite a bit of veterancy just from that one Pershing kill. Oh, absolutely. And you see some random teller mines going up, and it just goes to show you from the first teller mine that the Pershing hit, um, you know, it it doesn't really seem to matter where you put mines. For some reason, your opponents will always seem to find them. No, I actually like the setup um, of what's happening on the left-hand side. Two anti-tank guns, Pershing, a whole bunch of men, and if we look at the counter on the game, it's almost near the end, and we just have this build-up of forces, the uh, Panzerli, the... American, so really, I'm not too sure what would happen, what could, could uh, come out of this. I mean, they're both prepared for each other. Yeah, and you see an M3 half track coming up to help support the infantry fight that he's expecting in the middle, trying to protect his AT guns that are sitting there. So something is about to happen. You can just feel it. Forward supply lines are broken. <laughs> I would hope so. It'd be such a shame if the game just ended. <laughs> yeah, somebody drops, and that's the end of it. Kaput. Oh, but they're moving. Oh, this is, this is ruining my fun. I think what you're going to see here is since the infantry um, fled over to the east hand side, you're you're going to see uh, a push. Well, you got a mortar half track up, and so you're going to see the mortar half track start bombarding those AT guns. 
That's what it's going to be doing. And the Pershing just trying to get back in there to support those um, anti-tanks. Yeah, you see uh, one of the anti-tank guns going down, taking a couple of shots at the Pershing. Oh, jeez, this would be a perfect opportunity kind of to move in for the Panthers. Yeah, he's got one that's about 65% uh, health. Um, between the Pershing and the AT gun, you might lose one of the Panthers. But with the mortar half track, that you know that changes. But he might catch this AT gun out of position. Here we go. The game is near the end. What could happen? Pershing very badly damaged already. Um, King taking shots from a, a Panzer Trek squad from the behind. Unfortunately, King does not have any munition whatsoever. He's only got 11 munition. He's put that on the quad. To losing that Pershing, losing his quad. Oh my gosh. What seemed like was going to be such a strong force. I believe that's the end of the game, is it? Yeah, yes, it is. And it, it looks like it ended kind of with a whimper and not a bang. Yeah, that was uh, not the ex fireworks I was expecting. <laughs> that Pershing, unfortunately, was actually taken off much quicker than I was hoping. Um, yeah, so that was uh, a more of a, a bam rather than a boom. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, one of the things to say about that is a, a double Shrek squad with triple offensive veterancy from behind a Pershing is going to do just an enormous amount of damage. You've got rate of fire, you've got accuracy increases, you've got penetration increases. It already taken some damage from the Panthers. It, it goes incredibly quickly with those Shreks. Oh, that's right. At I mean, that just all that, all those uh, offensive capabilities on them. That Pershing was just bread. It was just torn apart. Yeah, and I think uh, part of what really hurt the American player here was not responding to the loss of his M8 through anything but a, you know, a very heavy rifleman push. Um, it, you know, not that the rifleman is a bad idea, but you'd like to see a little more support from it. Um, once you get a motor pool up, you can create a situation where you've got, uh, you know, you can back tech with as long as this game went on, you could back tech back to uh, the weapon support center, bring out a couple snipers, and make sure that every time he brings uh, the Panzergrins into the field, he pays for it. And that helps you keep the Panthers off of the field just as a result of the manpower drain. That's right. So just basically fighting something indirectly, just keeping those Panthers off by manpower drain, as you were saying. Um, I just got this air, this is sort of sense that um, the American was quite unsure what he should be doing. I mean, since those two M8s were taken out, yeah, he just was very not sure what he should do next. Um, but anyway, I think that was that was okay game. I like to see Panzer Elite do something different. So kudos to old noobs are here. And kudos to HQ King for participating in this replay. Anything else you'd like to say before we close this off? Before we uh, finish off dinner? Not at all. <laughs> before we finish off our hour-long casting for <laughs> Well, I think I think my belly's a bit full for dessert. <laughs> so I think I think that'll Fair be enough. it. Okay, thanks guys for uh, watching this replay. You can send in your replays to krebskohu at hotmail.co.uk and hopefully I'll get around to that sometime soon. This is a collaboration cast with Krebs Koho and Acoustic Rye, Ryan. So say bye. Bye bye, Ryan. <laughs> See y'all. <laughs> See you guys.